Uh, President Obama, British Prime Minister David Cameron calling on NATO this morning to reject isolationist impulses and confront the rising terrorist threat posed by ISIS in the Middle East. This as NATO leaders meet in Wales to discuss their response to Russia's escalating military intervention in Ukraine. Joining us here now on Post 9 to discuss it all, Wisconsin Republican Senator, Foreign Affairs Committee member Ron Johnson's at Post 9. Senator, it's great to have you. Good morning. Good morning, Carl. Uh, so we got this so-called Putin plan where he's laying out some terms, basically involve no concessions. Let's freeze it all right here, including the, the ground I've been able to get. Do we take that seriously or not? Great timing, huh? Yeah. No, I, no you can't take that seriously. You know, Putin's been playing the West uh, really like Stradivarius, quite honestly. And, and we, ne we need to understand who Putin is. He's a tyrant. He's, he's going to continue to aggressively expand you know, his sphere of influence. You know, I hear the administration officials talk about we got to offer him an, an, an off-ramp. He's not looking for off-ramps. He's looking for on-ramps. And so we, we, need, we need to really check his aggression. We need to show strength and resolve. So what's NATO's playbook then over the next couple of days? I mean, people say you got to be careful. Uh, you, you can go very small distance and suddenly find yourself at war with Russia. Well, there's a war right now. It's, it's, it's Russia against Ukraine. And if we don't check that expansion, it's just going to continue. So what we should have done, you know, this is Monday morning quarterbacking. We should have, when Yatsenyuk came here, we should have supplied him that small, those small arms and ammunition. That wouldn't have provoked Vladimir Putin. He doesn't need further provocation. We need to show that we're going to fully support President Poroshenko. And if we don't do that, well, we're seeing the disastrous results of not showing that type of support. I mean, the president has been supporting them. What would you recommend specifically at this point for the U.S. in terms of President Obama's response? More sanctions? H had we supplied lethal weaponry, defensive weaponry, like anti-tank rounds, maybe, maybe trainers to, to train the Ukrainian military and how to use those, maybe those Russian tanks wouldn't have crossed over into Ukraine. So we, we haven't shown the kind of support. As a result, because there's no price that Putin's had to pay here, he continues to uh, his, aggressive exp his aggressive expansion with impunity. Ukraine's not a member of NATO. Uh, they're a partner. And Article 5 says you look out for your, Understand. your members. So how, how do you square that argument about... Well, you, you know, listen, it was the U.S., it was Britain, and Russia that signed the Budapest Memorandum that supposedly assured the territory integrity and the self-governance of Ukraine. Now, obviously, you know, Russia doesn't respect that at all. We really should. And this, this doesn't require U.S. combat troops on the ground, but it needs a very visible, very vocal, very overt show of support for Ukraine. Now, we haven't done that for months, and again, we're, we're seeing what's happening. Uh, and again, the, the excuse of not providing small arms and ammunition, not providing lethal support has always been, well, you know, that could provoke Vladimir Putin. But again, I'll repeat. Vladimir Putin isn't looking for off-ramps. He, he needs no provocation. He's got a strategy in mind, and he's implementing it. It's one thing for us to say it. Uh, some of these European partners, though, live right next door, and provoking takes on a much different meaning when you're there. But again, if you continue that expansion to occur, I think that just threatens their, their security. I mean, you do achieve priests through strength. We're not showing strength. We're also not showing strength, uh, some would argue, when it comes to ISIL uh, and ISIS, the president not having a strategy. I understand the Republican criticism for not having a plan, although the president has said that we need to eliminate ISIS. What is the Republican response in terms of military action? It's been sort of vague. What needs to be done? First of all, let, let me dispute the fact that President Obama hasn't had a strategy. He, he has had one. It's about withdrawing from the world. He doesn't think America's input in the world is, is positive. He thinks because we've been involved in the world, you know, people hate our guts. But specifically and so, and so in he's, regard he's, to this he's been, he's been withdrawing. Well, so now we, we've, we've got to reverse that, that strategy and recognize the threat that is here, that is real. And what President Obama has to do is he's got to use that bully pulp, but he's got to explain, like his deputy assistant secretary of state in, in front of the Foreign Relations Committee, Brett McGurk, described why ISIS is a threat to America. They are streaming funneling 30 to 50 suicide bombers into Iraq every month. Brett McGurk said they could easily funnel those suicide bombers into the West, into America. That's the threat. President Obama has to explain that and, and very, be very clear in our objective. He, he wasn't clear. He said our objective is clear, degrade and destroy. Well, that's even ambiguous. Then he wanted to say, well, we, we've got to manage ISIS. No, we have to defeat them. We have to obliterate them. We've got to eliminate them. Does he have to get Congress's permission to do anything? L listen, I, I was actually part of a, a bipartisan group in the White House talking about a new authorization for the use of military force. I think president should come to us so that we can actually provide not only this president, but future presidents, the tools, the authorization they're going to need to continue to, to uh, address this ongoing threat. Th this isn't going to go away anytime soon. This is an asymmetric threat. 
We've not, we need to recognize that, and we've got to give the, any president the ability to respond effectively. The law of unintended consequences, though, does seem to play out rather strongly in the Mideast. I mean, we go up against ISIS, we start dropping bombs, we're helping the Shiites who once were killing our soldiers in Iraq. We're helping secure Assad's place in Syria, even though we want him out, and we're helping our enemy, Iran. Uh, listen, it's, it's complex. Go back in history. This isn't a Monday morning quarterbacking, but you have to learn the lessons. The historic blunder on the part of this administration was not leaving a stabilizing force behind. We wouldn't have seen Iraq disintegrate. We wouldn't have seen the, the ISIS rise out of the ashes of what once was al-Qaeda in Iraq. So you got to recognize that that is a huge blunder, and you have to deal with the reality as it is today, and the reality is uglier because of that historic blunder, so, but you have to still start dealing with it. ISIS isn't going away. They've made their aims very clear. They want to establish this caliphate. They have resources now. They're far better trained, far more effective, far more dangerous, and they're coming after the West. They've made that very clear. We ignore that danger at our own peril. Uh, we're going to see what NATO says over the next couple of days. It's great to have you in town. Oh, thanks for having Let's me. Come back soon. Senator Will Ron do. Johnson of Wisconsin. Up next on the show, Apple.